That's what I'm talking about. Let's look at all the heifers. And I ended up not with 120 heifers. I think I ended up with 113 heifers by the time I got them all calved out. All right? So here is an array. This is a line which represents 113 first calf heifers. On the top, the very worst heifer in this experiment, it took 30 pounds of feed to put on a pound of gain. Wow. The very best heifers took 10 pounds of feed to put on a pound of gain. I, I mean, I just, I have a hard time believing this data sometimes. But yet we look at it over a period of a month, and that's what we got. And those growth safe systems are checked constantly. So we've got a three-fold difference in the amount of forage it takes to put on a pound of gain. Okay? We go through a mathematical interpretation of the data. Leo does the same thing with the bulls as we did with that. In fact, we use the same guy to help us calculate the data. And so we plot actual feed intake versus predicted feed intake, and then we draw a line right through the middle of it, and that's average. Anything below the line, they ate less than you expected. Anything above the line, ate more than you would expect. So above the line is a positive number. Below the line is a negative RFI. Actually, what we do is we split the data into thirds. Bottom third, middle third, top third. Okay? Now, the top third scares me. When you've got an animal eating 45 pounds of feed, you're just saying, where is that feed going? I mean, <coughs> the gut is extended on that, but it's got to go somewhere. And it doesn't look like it's making more feces every day. I have no idea where that feed's gone. I can't see it disappear. I've got to get in there and measure that. Likewise, on those animals that are eating not very much feed at all per day, how are they surviving? How are they performing like you would not expect? They're eating less feed a day. Once again, let me express it to you a little differently. These are all 113 heifers, and I went zero is the vertical line. Everything on the left are heifers that ate less than expected. And I've just got them plotted from less than expected to more than expected. So the animal on the very top left ate nine pounds less than you'd expect. That scares me. The animal on the right ate six pounds more feed than you would expect. Okay? So I've got them all arrayed there, and that's how the data would look. So let's ask a couple of questions. And I've got about four slides left. The first question is, did the diet of the heifers affect birth weight of the calves? A phenotypic response is due to genetics in the environment. And part of the environment would be, say, nutrition. Okay? And so we changed the protein content of the diet. We got protein A coming from distiller's grains, protein B coming from soybean. One's getting about 12% protein, the other one's getting about 14% protein in the diet. So we ask the first question, did protein change birth weight of the calves? If it's a true RFI response, the answer would be no. And that's what we found. If we went to distiller's grains or soybeans, we found that the average birth weight was about 85 pounds on these heifers. So the answer to the first question, did diet influence birth weight of calves? No, didn't see any response by changing the type of protein these calves got. And actually, I thought we might see a response. It's not even close. Statistically, it's not even close to seeing a difference between feeding whole soybeans versus feeding distiller's grains. Let's ask another question. Did the residual feed intake of the heifers influence birth weight of the calves? If it's a really efficient heifer, a negative RFI, did that animal have a light birth weight? If it's a really positive, that cow eat more feed, did that increase birth weight of the calf? Or she's average. So just got this data. In fact, I summarized this data sitting right here last night. So this is brand new. You're the first group to see this, second group to see this. Ask the question, how did residual feed intake influence birth weight of the calves? It didn't. Didn't have any response on the calves. The efficient animals ate two pounds less feed, average, two pounds less feed than other animals. Birth weight was 83 pounds. The average animals had an RFI of 1.9. 
85 pound birth weight. And then the inefficient, the average of that top third was 2.1. 85 pounds. Statistically, 0.72. If it had been 0.05, I'd have been concerned. There's, this is not even close. RFI does not look like it's affecting birth weight of the calves. And so to try to end this with these 113 heifers that are less left in the herd, went back to Martinsdale and they've calved. I want to answer several questions. What's the stability of these really efficient heifers in the cow herd? And the inefficient heifers, will they stay for five years? What's the difference? Will they return to estrus within 80 days of calving? We're going to know that here by May. Okay? What's first service and overall conception rates? Yeah, did we get them bred? But what I really want to know is those really efficient heifers, did they breed up in the first 21 days of the breeding season? What's the weaning weights of the high and low RFI heifers calves? If you're a low RFI, is the weaning weight the same? I suspect it'll be the same. And then next, we're gonna take those weaned calves and we'll put them in the feedlot, back into the grow safe. We'll feed them to slaughter. Is there any difference in their calves in the feedlot? And then the big question is, is there any difference once you sell those animals? Because we don't wanna give up choice. We don't want to give up ribeye. We don't want to give up back fat. And lastly, this takes a lot of money to do these, these tests, as you know. What we have got to have is to get at least a thousand heifers data collected from Montana, Montana State, Midland Bull Test, Clay Center in Nebraska, University of Missouri, to pool our data, take a blood test and say, from a DNA test say this is a low RFI or a high RFI heifer. And once we get that, then we can really begin to make some progress selecting for efficient females. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, thanks again for allowing me to come and make this presentation to you tonight.